Hey, Scott from MyGrowthRings.com here. And, uh, you know, I hear from people that do not own or use ShopSmith tools that the uh, changeover from one function to another is just a hassle. And, and I've never found it to be a hassle. In fact, I kind of consider it quality time with my tools. But, but seriously, it's super easy, barely an inconvenience. But that's assuming that the tool is properly maintained and well lubricated. And the lubrication I'm talking about is not of the internal organs, but of the sliding components. And we use paste wax to do that lubrication. So it's part of routine maintenance. And in this video, I'm gonna show you a couple tips that I've learned from my years as an owner of Mark V's. So as a woodworker, uh, undoubtedly you've heard concerns about uh, wax and silicone and oil and the problems that that can create if it gets on your wood. And so it's important that when we apply a wax to these surfaces that we don't apply a wax that's going to transfer to the wood. This is why we don't use automotive paste wax. Automotive paste wax contains silicone and silicone is not compatible with much of anything. Um, this is why we stick with the standard uh, paste wax for furniture. And the uh, ideal ingredient in this is something called carnauba wax. It's a natural wax that's derived from palms, palm something, maybe palm nuts. I don't know those details. It used to be such an expensive ingredient that it was always mentioned somewhere on the label that it contains carnauba wax. The Johnson wax no longer says it on the label, uh, but I've checked on their website. Sure enough, it still does contain carnauba. That probably means that some other ingredient in here is, is more expensive than the carnauba used to be. Um, also, uh, kind of a myth about wax and whether you're applying it to your equipment or applying it onto a, a finished woodworking project is that you can get a, a wax buildup by adding layer upon layer upon layer. You cannot. These have a solvent in them. In this case, it happens to be naphtha. And the naphtha that is in the uh, soft wax that you're applying over, let's say, a first coat is going to dissolve that first coat. So at best, you get better penetration, you get better coverage by applying multiple coats, but you will not get multiple layers of wax building up. Now that said, there is one thing that we have to be sure we don't do when we are applying wax to a shopsmith and that thing we don't do can cause a buildup of wax that we don't want. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So we're going to use a clean cloth to apply the wax. Um, and you'll see that <laughs> this was sitting out in my, my car in a nice summer day in uh, North Carolina. But uh, here's tip number one. We're going to take a wad of this wax and put it inside of the rag close the rag up on it, and we're going to knead this. And rather than applying the wax directly to the tubes, we're going to apply the wax through the, wa the rag. So that has now softened a little bit. And with that, we can begin applying the wax. Now I wax both top and bottom of the tubes. And we're just wanting a film. And then here is tip number one. At this point, the temptation is to take that carriage and headstock and slide it across the wet wax and apply a wax on the other end. Don't do that. What will happen is you will transfer wax up to the holes of the carriage and the headstock where it will build up in clumps and mix with sawdust. And as you slide your headstock and carriage around, it'll encounter those clumps. And in fact, it'll start to redeposit those clumps and they create problems as you slide the headstock. They can even make the headstock or carriage kind of lock in place if you lock them and leave them uh, without moving for a while. So we're gonna give this 20 minutes. At that point, it should be completely dry. We'll buff it with a clean rag. Then we can slide everything over and repeat that process on the other side. All right, we have several more things we wanna wax. We wanna wax down inside of these tubes, these recess mounts, and we are additionally going to wax the tubes that go into it as well. Now it helps to have a, a stick or something to help push those down in and get this wax all the way down into the interior. 
So now while we're waiting for that end to dry, let's go ahead and apply some wax down here where the table tool tubes pass through the carriage. We'll do the same here. Any surface that you think would benefit from some lubrication, you're going to want to use wax. Um, I'll also wax down into these mounting holes and but more importantly than getting these well lubricated I want to wax the tubes on the bottom of my extension table my extension table that has all kinds of spider eggs go, <laughs> going inside of it we'll get these well waxed as well all right so can I wax this shaft can I wax the quill? Absolutely. Any of these surfaces, especially if they slide, are fair game for waxing. You might have the concern about, well, gee, waxing this spot, this is going to hold blade arbors and things. The set screw locks them firmly in place. They're not going anywhere. The presence of wax is not going to create problems. Now, I do not want this to retract for the same reason that I don't want the headstock to move across the tubes while the, uh, the wax is wet. So I'm going to take my depth gauge over here on the drill, set it for a little bit beyond four and a quarter, tighten that down gently, and that'll hold the quill out. And then from here, we will lubricate the main table. And the main table... We're going to want to clean this up. As part of routine maintenance, you're going to want to get in here with a brush and, and get the, uh, the buildup. It is a buildup of wax and of sawdust. And the more you allow that to build up, uh, the more of a chance you have of damaging the pinion that drives these up and down. I need a wire brush for this. I don't have a wire brush right now. Now, at some point, we're going to do a more, more thorough job of sharing maintenance information. But for now, I think you get the idea. Give that 20 minutes to dry. We will buff that off. One more spot I like to wax, which is not exactly obvious, is on the lower saw guard of the 510, 520, 505. We've got these steel shafts that slide in these aluminum brackets right here. And so I want to occasionally push this down and apply wax onto those. Now, I am not worried about a wax buildup here, so I don't mind letting this go. And in fact, I'll even actuate that a few times to spread the wax. Um, the reason why is this, this thing is constantly being open and closed, and uh, that has never been a problem for me to have any kind of a wax buildup there. We've also wax the table, uh, wax the miter gauge bar itself, any other pieces and parts. This table's in horrible shape. I bought it secondhand and the whole thing needs to get buffed. But uh, right now, everything's sliding smoothly and I'm happy. So you want to see how things are moving. Let's give this a shot. So here's our, our extension table on the end. Put that in there. We can just we can just drop it under its own weight, moving nice and smooth. We can move the table up and down, no problem. We can slide the carriage along the way tubes. We can easily slide the headstock. Okay, we are ready for work. Man, it's a hot day here. <laughs> uh, one last tip. Now that I've got a, a rag that has mostly wax on it, um, I'm going to fold this up. This is just a wash rag or a wash cloth. And uh, I can fold this thing up and make it compact enough to have it live right here inside of the wax container. And of course, the more you use the wax, the, the more room you're going to have in there to accommodate the rag. And I'll use that for years and years to come. The, uh, the tin of wax I have in my actual shop I've been using for probably 25 years. It's almost completely gone, 
but it's the same rag that I put in there 25 years ago. So hopefully this helps and uh, we'll see you again real soon.